Yeah. Here, let's put this on your hat, all right? I'll just put it like on the brim. Let's put it like on the side right there. And they just there we go. All right. Yeah, where where do you wanna just do it right here? Yeah, that's cool. Like, I'll sit with you right here. You wanna stand up? Sure. All right. All right, so country. How old are you, man? I'm 49. 49? Did you grow up here in Tucson? Nah, I actually am from originally from California. Okay. I came out here in like 2001. So, may as well say I've been out here damn long enough. <laughs> yeah. The sun, can we get you like facing that way? It's kind of, kind of, kind of dark. Like this is a dark individual. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it's just like the sun. It's weird. All right. All right, bro. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, Ooh. save. <laughs> ah, see, man, that's what I'm talking about. There we go. You must, got hands. You play football, huh? No, nah, I used to wrestle. Oh, shit. Yeah. Baseball, too. That's what's up. So, uh, in, where'd you grow up, bro? I'm sorry? I grew up in California. Okay. Yeah, I used to go back and forth, you know. And then I got kids out here now, so I'm here, you know. At least until they're 18. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Tucson, it was cool. Then I ran into some bullshit things happening. To my, mom. my mom passed away, and that's when I just said, F it. I didn't give a fuck about nothing else then. So. When did she pass? 2014. All right. Sorry to, definitely sorry to hear about that, dog. Uh, were you staying with her at that time? Um, at that time, I was staying between her and my baby mom. Okay. With the kids and stuff. And so, what is your situation right now? Right now, I'm out here homeless and roaming the bike trails from yeah. Grant to Speedway. <laughs> All right. But, uh, here we go. And how long have you been homeless? I've been homeless for about, I can say like six years. So what Maybe. led, um, huh? What led to your homelessness? Well, like I said, with my mom passing, and then like I had roommates and stuff, and and, and stealing my shit and running off and not paying the rent, you know, kind of got stuck. And then, like I said, I'm not with my kid's mother, so I chose to be out here, basically, because I didn't want nobody to really know what I was doing when I was doing hair. So instead of me, you know, letting everybody find out, I just took off. So, yeah, yeah, it's, it's I would say, because I was the person that, you know, that they would come to and ask, you know, need help or whatever. My baby mom asked me that. How do you go from the person that helps everybody to the out here? Well, but in a way, like, it's crazy because, uh, you know, I miss it, you know, but I don't miss certain things. Like, you know, like I said, my baby mom became one of my triggers. Around her, I had to be on something because she just, even if I wasn't doing nothing, In the the girl you're with right now, is she your baby's mom? I, the one I'm with right now, I have I had a daughter with her. She passed. She was she was born, stillborn, you know, 2017. Yeah, you've been dealing with a lot, dog. Yeah. And as far as like, um, like addiction, what what's your your main drug of choice? How long has that been part of your life? <laughs> the cool thing about it, bro, like I said, 
I was always the one that, so it came on later on in life. Like when I was like 30, say like 36, that's when I started using heroin. Other than that, it was just like weed, you know, every now and then, charm stick. But yeah, now, but now I, I fell into the blues epidemic. So I've been using blues. But it's not good for nobody, <laughs> them things. But like you say, I'm not saying that drugs are good or whatever, but if you had to do them, I'd stick with that one. I, I totally understand that. That's what we were talking about before uh, we started recording. I totally understand. How do you think, actually, how long have you been doing the blues? I've been doing blues for... Uh, the last couple of years, like oh. when they, and how have they affected your life? What kind of impact have, have they had? Well, I mean, it's become like that's what you do. You just chase. You, you, you got to chase it. It's not like heroin where you could where you could just do a shot and be cool for hours and you know go do other stuff and still function. You know, but these things you're chasing. You know. And now they're like going back up, you know, they had dropped down to where they're like a dollar a pill. And now they're going back up to like five dollars. So, yeah. Damn, I didn't know that. Yeah. I knew these things were dirt cheap, but that's the first I heard. But I get it. I get it. I get it. There's probably more heat on whoever's like producing it. And I don't know. Who knows? Could be a number of things. Why is it doing that? But, and how many do you think you're uh, like going through a day? Oh, I'll say today, at least 30, at, at least, and that's just me, not including my spouse, you know, and yeah, so say anywhere from, I'm getting like probably like 60 to, to probably like anywhere from 60 to 100 blues a day down there, so yeah, it can be. It really hurts your pockets. <laughs> you know, everything we do revolves around that. Yep. Yep. And it, it's cold. That's a big habit, dog. Yeah. That's a real big habit. And then you got certain friends out here that you might come across that's sick, you know what I'm saying? And it's not like you could just be like, like, when this heroin all over here or something, you know what I'm saying? Nah, you yeah. have to. It's like jail. Like, Everybody knows each other's business and pretty much just like that little community, right? Yeah. But everybody I met here has been great, dog. Like, I don't know if it's because, like, I'm an addict myself, but everybody just welcomes me in with open arms, and I, I love it, dog. Um, and kind of thing about it, like, is it like that? Like, we're, we're, we're like that just period, you know? But some people just don't give us a chance to find out, you know? They just automatically think, oh, you're out here homeless, so you're either a dirt bag or something, you know what I'm saying? They don't really know what what might have happened or what, you know? Sometimes you just got to give a person a chance to just talk to them. Talk to them. Hi, how you doing? You know, start a conversation. Might kind of find out, that right? Might pique your interest and can be grateful that you ran into that person and have a new friend in life or something, you know? Yep. Never know what could happen, man. What's the um, the wildest thing you've experienced since you've been homeless, or craziest thing you've seen? Mm, shit. <laughs> that you can speak on. Um, like crazy, crazy uh, stuff. Like, like <clears throat> I don't know, man. Cause honestly, I didn't see some crazy stuff out here, man. I didn't see people just running down the street and naked for no reason. You know what I'm saying? And, People like on the bridge and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Acting like they're gonna jump over and somebody had to snatch them off, you know, before they actually jumped. It's like, or, you know, monsoon season where a person don't believe that the water's gonna come and they're out there and get, you know, and have to come get pulled out or something. Like, yeah. Some scary stuff. <laughs> I came out here a couple days ago and saw some guy just walking right here and he was kind of falling out 
his knees just buckled and boom, he just fell. But that was rough to see. Oh yeah, like that either from the from the heat or from the bit of pills, bro. Like for real, man. Like you see a lot of people if you you catch them, like. But recently, you could tell that it was something different because you wouldn't see people like not now or whatever. They had these pills that were going around. They had this nasty, just oh, god awful taste, you know. And it and nobody would do it, do them really, or or try to find something else. And it was just like nobody. You could tell like something was different because you like you usually come, you see people like this. Yeah. Or whatever, everybody functional function, you know. But now it's pretty much good getting back because now if you look, you catch a few over there, like knotted out or whatever. But yeah, they I think they did that to boost the prices back up, you know, put a whole bunch of garbage stuff out there and then bam, charge for the good stuff, you know. But too, I think they might do it because uh, I think you're gonna try to boost and bring back instead cause, yeah because this these blues are like man yeah so i spoke to you a bit ago and you said you never been to detox no no rehab nothing like that no you know where uh detox is do i know where it's at yeah um i sort of kind of like i know like cbi's um somewhere like on uh what is that palo verde I think. Um, there's one downtown. Um, I'll give you my information and tell you how to like get there and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah, that's like if I never went to detox and then rehab, I don't think I would have ever got clean. Because if you have access, the state fund insurance, they'll pay for that. And I was there for four months and gave me my life back. But um so like what are the the challenges of being out here with with your girl or having like two habits to feed well it's i mean sometimes it could be nerve-wracking because you know like you said we talked and you, you know what i'm saying like you said you had to be first like you know and whatever i want i i used to do everything so she wouldn't have to, you know, like I felt since she was out here that I try to make it as easy as I could for her, you know what I'm saying? She didn't have to try to hustle or none of that. All she had to do is make sure she's at the spot, had the spot right or whatever, and she, that was it, you know what I'm saying? But now she tries to do more, tries to help out, you know? But it's kind of crazy though because uh you got some dudes out here that snakes or you know people period bro and they try to use the drugs to try to influence females you know what i'm saying so with that you know sometimes that can be nerve-wracking or whatever but thank goodness that she doesn't go for the okie doke you know yeah but yeah i'd rather go out there and do what i have to do to make sure that She's straight before I let somebody take advantage or, you know, try to take advantage of it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, both of you guys have to watch each other's back, man. Yeah. She's a little feisty, man. She has my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. So is there anything you want uh, people to know, like, about this lifestyle or, or, or the blues or anything like that? Just, just know that it's not... Well, I'm not gonna say the last of but some of the people are not as bad as you might think they might be. So, you know, sometimes just, hey, give a person a chance, say hi to them, Rabbi, don't just look and just make faces and or lock your doors or something like, come on. Like really somebody's gonna run up to you at the park. <laughs> I mean, and it's why you're parking, you just open your door or something. I mean, come on, man. Anything we have be the ones to help you quicker than the average person and that's crazy but hey just want y'all to know that you guys are people too man yeah you know and it's possible to to make it to the other side dog like it's yeah. kind of rough at first like your first year but if it's so rewarding like once you get your life back you know what i mean this is 
let this right here, let this only be a chapter in your life, dog. True. Because you're, you're well spoken. I've I've seen I've interviewed a lot of people um, that were shot out. They have a lot of like scabs and stuff, raw stuff on their leg. Uh, three people I've interviewed like that, and uh, yeah, it's rough out here, bro. Yeah, it is. And like right now, I had like issues with my with my legs being swollen because uh, I never stole my my blood pressure medication. Like I don't know why I think they get high or something, uh, <laughs> but it's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so between that and not laying, you know, and have your your legs in the position with it over your heart, you know, makes you, you should retain water and swell up. So yeah, other than that, nah, I'd be good, you know. So the swelling is that from the the using, you think, mm. or the, the blood pressure? Is the, the blood pressure? Yeah, is the blood pressure get? and uh, like most of the times, like when we're like this, we don't we don't lay out. We we sit up. And go to sleep or whatever, so it makes the, the blood flow, you know, messed up. Then yeah, yeah. up. So all it does is end up swelling your legs up. Now, if I lay, go to take a nap or whatever, I lay down. Yeah. And as long as I have my legs elevated over my heart, it is down and they'll be, they be straight. All right, brother. Are you, um, last question, um, are you in contact with like family or anything? Um, yeah, I talked to some of them. Okay. Like I talked to the ones like in like different states and stuff like that. But like Facebook or on the phone, you know, every once in a while. But I should be more in contact with them because I can honestly say I know like if I wanted to go home or whatever, that they would you know show me with open arms, love me, and so. But, you know, they say you have to be ready yourself. You can't do it for nobody else. That's facts. So. And if they happen to see this video, do you want to say anything? To know that I'm still here. I'm still breathing. And I still love you guys. All right, country. All right. Thank you for your story, bro. Uh-huh.